will continue our serial of the diploma in value added products from fruit and vegetables in this season of the festivals of ramzan and navratras we will take the storage and marketing of the fruits and vegetables we have invited dr charanjit kaur she is senior scientist at iri she will be discussing both the blocks we will take first block first block number 3 storage and marketing I'll be requesting Dr. Charanjit. Now, this block, storage and marketing, consists of four units. I will request Dr. Charanjit Kaur to explain about the complete block about this. Dr. Thank Charanjit. you, Dr. Saluja. Um, I would like to tell the students that the first two chapters in this block they are basically focused on storage and storage structures, and the rest two more, uh, units are basically focused on marketing. Now we will first start with the basic important structures that is the storage of fruits and vegetables. Now it's very important to know that why we need to store fruits and vegetables at all. Why there is a need to store fruits and vegetables at low temperature or to store them at cool storage or cool chamber or refrigeration. So students should always know that fruits and vegetables you know they are, are highly perishable. Now you would like to know why they are perishable. now perishable means that they can spoil very easily so you should always remember that they spoil easily because they have very high moisture content so naturally when the moisture content is very high the transpiration rate is very high and since they are living commodities they are living systems they also undergo respiration they produce lot of heat and during this process ethylene is also produced now ethylene is a ripening hormone which helps the fruits to ripen so because of these uh, metabolic changes fruits and vegetables they can spoil very easily now if they can spoil now how can we control the spoilage now we can control the spoilage of fruits and vegetable by storing them at low temperature and when we store them at low temperature or under any structures which maintain low temperature the two most important things you which you have to always keep in mind the temperature of the storage and the humidity if we can maintain proper temperature and if we can maintain proper humidity conditions in the storage structures we can extend the shelf life so our main objective is to extend the shelf life of commodities and to prevent them from spoilage and this is what is you are going to learn in these chapters two chapters now let us see first of all what happens if we do not store the fruits and vegetables under proper temperature and proper humidity conditions potato if you have normally seen undergoes sprouting sprouting this basically happens because you we keep them under very high temperature conditions similarly you know yellowing in some cases in in case of broccoli if the temperature is very high also sometimes you also see the potatoes becoming green because if they are exposed to light conditions similarly rotting rotting basically undergoes when the fruit goes lot of shrivelage because of very high transpiration and that leads to microbial infections so these are normal undesirable changes which lead to the end of the shelf life or what we say as a senescence senescence is the last stage or what we in simple terms we can say the death of the cells or the breakdown of tissues so this is what undesirable changes and that take place now we have to prevent these undesirable changes and as i have already said this can be done if we can maintain proper humidity proper temperature and we can provide appropriate structures uh, for storage of fruits and vegetables how low temperature you know can extend the shelf life low temperature can do this by three ways first of all it can reduce transpiration it can also reduce the respiration rate if you have low temperatures the respiration rate will be very low and this will further reduce the transpiration and finally the ethylene gas which is normally produced which leads to the senescence is also 
uh, washed off. So always remember that low temperature regulates respiration, regulates transpiration, and also prevents the ethylene gas production. Now, when we store the fruits and vegetables under any storage conditions, you should always remember that there are certain factors which will regulate their shelf life. And we have classified, in a simplified manner, we have classified these factors into the pre-harvest factors and the post-harvest factors. Now, let us first of all see what are these pre-harvest factors and how can they affect the shelf life of fruits and vegetables. Now, if you see, you know, in a very simplified manner, the pre-harvest factors include the conditions of in the field where your plant material is growing. How, what is the quality of seed which you are using for a particular fruit or a particular vegetable? What is the density? Plant density means refers to the um, distance between the plants, between the uh, individual plants. Then type of irrigation which you are giving. How frequent has been the irrigation or whether irrigation is proper or at proper intervals. There should be no, no high irrigation during when the fruit is ripening. Uh, especially, you know, in case of tomatoes, it is observed that if the irrigation is towards the end when the fruit is ripening, it leads to cracking. And naturally, if there is a cracking in the beginning, naturally, there will be uh, uh, the, uh, the shelf life will be se severely affected. So irrigation is a very important factor. Apart from this, uh, insecticides, the kind of insecticides which you are spraying for and the fertilizers which you are using. If very high nitrogen dose is given normally to vegetables, that can also help in reducing their shelf life. So these are just common important pre-harvest factors. We have grouped them into pre-harvest factors which are basically uh, covered under field conditions. And these have to be kept in mind if we want to prolong the shelf life. Then we have a very important, uh, now coming to the, after the pre-harvest factors, we talk about the post-harvest factors. Now, once the fruits and vegetables are harvested, you know, they have a lot of heat entrapped in them. This heat which is present within the fruits and vegetables after they are harvested, it is known as the field heat. Now, this field heat has to be removed. Because if it, if it remains, if it is entrapped in the commodity, this will severely affect the shelf life. So the process by which we remove this field heat is known as pre-cooling. And this is a very important post-harvest factor which we always need to keep it in mind. Now, how can we remove this field heat? Now, you will be reading about these uh, different methods of pre-cooling in, in these chapters. Uh, the first, a very common system for pre-cooling is the uh, room cooling. In case of room cooling, what is done is the commodity or the produce is put in a, a room and this room is equipped with a cooling unit or a refrigeration unit. So it's a very simple system. Then comes uh, forced air cooling. In case of forced air cooling, the uh, system is same as that of room cooling, but only in this case in forced air cooling, you have uh, fans. Fans are used and these fans are used to force the air into the produced. Because when the, pa uh, when the commodity is packed into a pallet or into a package or it is put into crates, uh, the air, it, it's difficult for the air to move in. So in this case, fans are used and the fans help into uh, forcing this air directly into the product. Then another system of cooling is hydrocooling. Now, hydrocooling, is, uh, as you can just simply learn from the uh, title itself, in which cold water is put directly over the produce. But in this case, you have to remember that hydrocooling is only suitable for certain commodities, like for big size fruits, like broccoli can be uh, very easily used for this, and carrots can be used, and cauliflower can be used in case of hydrocooling. And there's another system for pre-cooling, which is known as hyperbaric storage. Always remember that hyperbaric storage system is a, is a little expensive uh, kind of a system in which the commodities are placed in a chamber in which there is vacuum. So when vacuum is applied, the water evaporates. So this is little expensive and this is only used in case of those commodities like leafy vegetables, which are a little bit uh, in certain countries, you know, um, 
leafy vegetables high like lettuce and all so hyperbaric storage systems are used in those cases this is a, a simple uh, si system which shows how pre cooling takes place in forced air cooling you have a cooling unit outside if you see then there are fans and because if we have a system cooling unit and fans help you know to force the cool air into the containers or into the package so hydro cooling and sometimes you know even ice also may be directly put over the produce uh, that is known as ice cooling crushed ice is put over on the produce that is highly useful for uh, in case of broccoli now apart from this uh, the second part of the this module is basically focused on types of storage structures we have different kinds of storage structures they may be simple storage structures which are used in our traditional system in uh, rural areas or they may be some high tech structures so it's very important to know what are the different types of storage structures which can be used for storage of fruits and vegetables if you read the chapter you will find the use of terms like clamps cellar and you have ventilated storage structures and uh, a very important storage structure is evaporative storage structure which is the zero energy cool chamber now let's see how a clamp looks like now this is how a clamp uh, this is basically you know a traditional system of storage which is basically used uh, for vegetables like potato or for even be turnips also in simple structure in which a uh, area is demarcated which is free from water logging and the uh, vegetables like potatoes say here you see potatoes they are piled up and then they are covered up with some straw and then finally they may be also covered up with some plastic or even soil depending upon the requirement of the area or de depending upon the vegetable but sometimes you know there can be a problem of uh, Uh, heat pockets because if there is no because when you pile sometimes there can be problem of improper ventilation so that can sometimes lead to rotting that is why there is a provision for air ducts like bamboos are used and uh, some ducts are provided so that they can be proper ventilation uh, then this is another type kind of a structure which is known as a cellar and this is basically a underground structures which may be used under cold temperature conditions basically it is under the house so that, that uh, when it is under the house it provides a kind of a insulation and it may be helpful for extending shelf life in very cold climates so again these are traditional kinds of systems which are still being used in uh, rural areas this is a, a just a, a representation pictorial representation of how a storage structure for onion looks like because onion special uh, ventilated structures have to be designed again you know there is a problem of rotting there is a problem of ventilation so if you see in this slide there is a below ventilation and side ventilation now this kind of ventilation helps to eliminate the problem of uh, the heat pockets and so this ensures ventilation so that uh, no rotting takes place so these are ventilated kind of structures which are suitable for only certain kind of commodities so this kind is basically used for onions now we have a, when uh, in this chapter you will also read about uh, cool chamber cool chamber is a very common kind of a structure which has been recommended for storage of fruits and vegetable under rural conditions or where you have limited structure uh, limited in infrastructure this is also known as zero energy cool chamber now you would like to know why it is known as uh, zero energy uh, it is called as zero energy because the electrical input in terms of energy is zero you don't need electrical energy in this case what you need is uh, simply sand simple structures and brick because it is made up of a brick system and sand and if there is a constant supply of water then we can maintain humidity and we can bring down the temperature in this uh, simple structure now this is uh, uh, in uh, in especially in summers you know when the temperatures are very high about 42 outside if you can store this uh, fruits and vegetable in this simple structures it can bring down the temperature to, to about 28 degrees c and relative humidity again also to about 90 to 95% it is basically based upon a very system evaporative cooling 
like you, when you see earthen pot how the water gets cooled down in a earthen pot it's basically evaporation when water evaporates it leads to a cooling effect so it's a simple evaporating cooling system principle which is used in this cool chamber and this is uh, commonly uh, uh, recommended for rural areas commonly recommended for rural areas then you will also read about a very common uh, high uh, high tech structures nowadays we uh, agriculture is being commercialized and uh, certain commodities you know uh, high com uh, commodities like which have to be exported they may be stored under uh, high tech structures so one of the high tech structure is control atmosphere storage now in case of the control atmosphere storage apart from maintaining temperature and apart from maintaining humidity we maintain you know the composition of two most important gases now we have talked about respiration but it's very important to regulate respiration if we want to extend shelf life and this is what is done in case of this high tech structure that is control atmosphere when we say control atmosphere we mean we are trying to maintain or regulate the gaseous composition the composition of oxygen the composition of carbon dioxide so in this case we lower down the concentration of oxygen and we also lower down the concentration we inc uh, increase the concentration of carbon dioxide and the normal gaseous composition in atmosphere is 21% and we bring it down to about 5% so we are lowering the oxygen concentration and reverse vice versa with carbon dioxide we are increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide so when we do this we can lower down the respiration rate and this can extend the shelf life when you read about the storage structures and we, when you read about the post harvest condition it's very important that uh, there are two terms if you read in the chapters that there are different kinds of fruits you know classification is whether a fruit is a climatic fruit or it's a non climatic fruit and before storage it's always necessary to know what is the difference difference between a climatic fruit and a non climatic fruit now uh, if you have seen you know normally if you see in market mangoes if you see they are normally harvested you see green mangoes because mangoes are harvested when they are unripe and then by artificial means they are made to ripen if you have seen in boxes you may you may find some uh, pouches these pouches they contain calcium carbide in the packets and these calcium carbide is a chemical which liberates the ethylene gas and this helps the mangoes to ripen so mangoes if they are ripened unripe they can be made to ripen artificially by use of calcium carbide so a climatic fruit is that fruit which when harvested unripe will show a increase in the respiration rate and accompanied by a increase in the ethylene gas now ethylene gas is the one which helps to ripen the fruit so mango can be harvested when unripe similarly even banana if you have seen they are unripe but if you keep them outside for some time they gradually ripen by themselves but on the other hand if you see grapes may not ripen so it's very important that grapes have to harvest to be harvested when they are completely ripe because they will not show any increase in the respiration rate after they are harvested and there will be no accompanied liberation of ethylene gas so please always remember it's very important to distinguish between the kind of fruits the climatic fruits and the non climatic fruits grapes is a common uh, non climatic fruit because grapes will not ripen by themselves if you keep them outside similarly is strawberry also is orange sometimes if you find that the citrus rind is greenish it may turn yellowish but inside ripening may not be complete and it cannot be made to uh, ripen artificially so these similarly is lychee and even pomegranate so it's very important when we store fruits and vegetables under Uh, cold storages we have to identify the kind of nature the, what is the nature of a particular commodity whether it is a climatic and whether it is a non climatic so this is a very important part in this chapter then the next uh, unit is about uh, the market 
now we have talked about storage structures uh, and different kinds of storage structures let's see who after the commodities are produced or after the f uh, fruits and vegetables are harvested how marketing takes place so market is a physical place where buyers or sellers they gather and they exchange goods so farmer can be there and then a wholesaler may be there so basically the function of marketing is exchange when buyers or sellers are present at one place and apart from this there can be other functions like storage or even transportation now we have talked about storage now in case of fruits and vegetables this function of storage storage them at uh, cool chambers or at high tech storage structures may be taken by a different agency it may be taken up by middleman or by cooperatives so marketing also as an additional function apart from buying and selling then also another function is facilitating function which is financial giving support in terms of finance and also in certain cases risk bearing functions so always keep it in mind three important functions apart from buying and selling even especially when we talk of fruits and vegetables transportation and storage now uh, this slide shows uh, the marketing channels we from like you see from the farmer it may come down to the cooperatives and sometimes uh, this cooperatives may be you know uh, may be commissioner agents may be a single or it can be a big cooperative house and then it comes down to a wholesaler as you have seen wholesaler like you have azadpur sabji mandi under north indian conditions and then it comes down to the consumer sometimes even these channels may be bypassed and you may directly have the produce from a farmer to a consumer now there is a additional you know marketing channel which we see nowadays in the market now we have a system of contract farming wherein the entire produce of the farmer is bought is bought by the big uh, processing units they may buy the entire produce of the farmer this is system is known as contract farming like suppose if a particular uh, processing unit wants to manufacture tomato sauce so they may ask the farmer to produce the required uh, the kind of tomatoes a particular variety and they may buy his entire produce so this is a contract farming system which is becoming very common in uh, in states of punjab Uh, then uh, again the classification is based upon types of market based upon the location whether it is a village or market or a seaboard market and then also based upon the area which is covered it may be a national market or it may be a wild world market then also the time span and again the volume of transaction if time span basically sometimes if you see small markets so like a thursday market or monday market these are small mark uh, short span markets what we say and then there are uh, long span markets and there are some certain markets which are fixed so basically it's upon time span and also the volume of transaction which they have so if the volume of transaction is very big then you have wholesale markets and then if smaller then you have retail markets again based upon the competition and based upon the product you have uh, perfect and imperfect markets you will also read about the role of middleman now in case of uh, fruits and vegetables we have talked about storage and we have seen transportation also has to be taken up so this kind of function you know may be preferably be taken up by a middleman it may be a single person or maybe some cooperatives and they may be involved in transportation from the village to the city and then subsequent storage also in between if storage is required at a cool uh, cold storage then this type of function may be taken up by the middleman or cooperatives now the last part of this unit is focused upon the marketing information system this is basically this is just to give an idea that agriculture is being commercialized we, we do not produce uh, uh, the fruits fruits and vegetables according to our own requirements but we also produce produce for exporting like onions we are exporting also so agriculture is being commercialized and that is why it is very important for the farmers to have access to the marketing information so there is this chapter is focused on the marketing information you have different agencies which provide you this marketing information 
you have TVs and uh, email, uh, internet services are there, news bulletins are there, newspaper, a very good system now is the internet which gives very good information for the, for the farmers to produce uh, th uh, goods according to the needs of the foreign markets and as well as domestic markets. Krishi channels are also there. Nowadays we have also Krishi channels which are particularly focused on the farmers' uh, needs. We should also know what are the benefits a farmer or a producer gets from this marketing information systems. Basically, they are the systems, uh, these inform basically they give you information or guidelines for future production strategies. If you see the functions, they are basically guidelines that what kind of uh, commodities which a farmer should produce so that he should get more income and this so that a farmer can produce fruits and vegetables according to the consumer. Now, if you have uh, very commonly seen earlier, I think about five years back, there was no broccoli in the market. But now if you see even in small, you know, mother dairy units, you find broccoli vegetable is being produced. And farmers are producing this uh, uh, vegetable, they are growing this. This is basically because the consumer is very much aware, consumer wants that this uh, particular commodity should be available. So accordingly, farmers are also tuning themselves to the needs and requirement of the consumer. So a farmer gets to know all this about various, various marketing information systems. And this also helps in uh, early spotting of changing trends. Like I mentioned the system contract farming. So the farmer also gets to know about contract farming systems and the requirements of the big processing units from these marketing channels. So this is in brief what is being discussed. Thank you. This is in brief what is being discussed in these two uh, basic uh, units, storage and marketing. Thank you, Dr. Chiranjit, uh, for you. covering the very complex topic in a very simple and with diagrammatic presentation showing with the diagrams which were slightly missing in our block. I think Dr. Chiranjit will like to share some of the important points again with the students. Sure. Like, uh, wh why do we need storage? What uh, is the importance? No, uh, I think when, when I started, you know, I mentioned that, you know, fruits and vegetables are highly perishable commodities. They have very high moisture content and because they are living systems, they also go on respi respiration. And when they respire, heat is produced. So they can spoil very easily. The basic points, that is they are very uh, perishable because they have very high moisture content. So if you, if you just see a list, you know, of the composition of any fruit and vegetable, they have about 80 to 90 percent of moisture. If the storage things are not proper, what type of uh, deterioration takes place? Like yeah. sprouting you mentioned. Yeah, uh, if temperature and uh, it's very important that when we store, you know, under low temperatures, there are two important things, storage uh, under low temperature, temperature and humidity are the two important factors when you store them. And if you don't maintain temperature, optimum temperature, and if you do not maintain proper humidity, then you can, uh, fruits and vegetables can undergo undesirable changes. But what is field, uh, what is field heat? Yeah. As we said, you know, but living, these are living systems, fruits and vegetables are living. So when they undergo respiration, so when they undergo respiration, heat is always produced. So when you harvest them, this, this is what is field heat. This is in the form of the energy and this is entrapped in a particular commodity. So if you want, it's very important to control this field heat and to bring down this field heat. So this is known as pre-cooling and we, uh, before Cool, uh, putting them under cold storages, we have to remove this field heat or uh, that is why we have to do a pre-cooling. And what are the different methods of pre-cooling? There are different uh, ways by which you can cool them. Uh, you have room cooling, simple re room cooling is a refrigeration unit. You put the produce in a room which is equipped with a refrigeration system. Sometimes, you know, it is difficult when the uh, commodities are packed into crates or into packets or into or they are palletized. If you see this, there are a lot of fruits and there are a lot of vegetables. Now, it will be difficult for the student to memorize, you know, all of them together. So, I give you a very simple uh, solution to this. Always remember that for fruits, you know, the general range of temperature storage should be approximately in the range of say about 5 to 10. 
जनरल सर जनरल रेंज एंड विच कैन बी सूटेबल फॉर मोस्ट काइंड ऑफ फ्रूट्स फाइव टू टेन डिग्री सी इज ऑप्टिमम टेम्परेचर इन केस ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स द रेंज इज लिटिल बिट लो यू कैन हैव अबाउट से अबाउट जीरो टू अबाउट टेन सो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर द जनरल रेंज फॉर फ्रूट्स इज अबाउट फाइव टू टेन एंड इन केस ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स इट मे इट इज द लो रेंज इज स्लाइटली लो इट इज अबाउट जीरो बिकॉज सर्टन कमोडिटीज लाइक कॉलीफ्लावर यू नो सम इवन पोटैटोज यू कैन गो इन फॉर लो टेम्परेचर स्टोरेज ऑल्सो एट लो टेम्परेचर जीरो डिग्री सो दिस इज अ जर्नल रूल सो यू मे नॉट लर्न इट फॉर ऑल द कमोडिटीज बट रिमेंबर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट लाइक इफ इट इज अ पोटैटो जीरो मे बी अ फिजिबल स्टोरेज देन सिमिलरली फॉर कॉलीफ्लावर और इवन फॉर कैरेट्स यू कैन स्टोर देम एट जीरो डिग्री एंड फॉर जनरली फॉर फ्रूट्स इट इज अबाउट फाइव टू टेन Now, always remember this is a very important point which I have missed in my slides. That there are two important fruits, mango and banana. Now, if you would see the temperature ranges for mango and for banana, for mango you will find the optimum temperature say about fourteen, and for banana you will find about thirteen to fifteen. Now, it's very important to know why you know this limit is there for mango and banana. now mango and banana fruits are very much susceptible to chilling injury the moment you bring down the temperature uh, to less than 14 or less than 13 degree they can go and uh, they can show symptoms of chilling injury so these fruits need not be stored at temperatures lower than this so always remember for fruits mango and banana keep in your mind they are susceptible to chilling injury so always remember their specific temperature requirement and the general which i have told you is for uh, fruits about 5 to 10 or even 5 to 13 and then in case of vegetables it is slightly i think i made the, i i did not talk about this control atmosphere and modified we have mentioned about control atmosphere storage so in case of uh, it's important to know that in case of cold uh, control atmosphere the gaseous composition is maintained now in case of modified atmosphere it's a self generating system in case of control atmosphere system we are ourselves you know the system itself maintains the composition of gases but in case of the modified atmosphere there is a package around the fruit and vegetable so when you have a packet it now if you have a cut vegetable and it is packed in a packet so what will happen it's a living system it will respire so when it respires it produces carbon dioxide so the concentration of carbon dioxide goes Hi so we'll conclude this uh, block and we'll I'll thank Dr Charanjit for covering the complete block in very simple and effective manner thank you very much